Position, Velocity, and Acceleration. Let's look at this example where there was a track and an object is constrained to move along the track. Notice there are some straight segments where point A is along a straight vertical segment, point C is on a straight inclined segment, and point B is a point along a curved part of the track. And we'll look at these various quizzes here. We'll be looking at the direction of position, velocity, and acceleration. And we'll use this direction key. So if something is up, it will be number one. If something was to the right, number three. And we'll see some examples. Now there are three quizzes, T1, T2, T3. And let's start with the first group, right? So we have the position of an object at point A. Well, the position of an object is represented as an arrow pointing from the origin of a coordinate system to the object of interest. I'm showing like a bead that's able to move freely on the track. Right, so we could easily have, with the choice of coordinates, option 8. Arrow 8 most closely represents this arrow from the origin to object at point A in terms of direction. But if we move the coordinates, we could say put the origin of coordinates below point A, then the position vector goes up from the origin to point A, right? So we can get option one. And you start to see that the position heavily depends on where you placed your coordinates, right? I can get option two by placing the coordinates here. I can get option seven, right, to the left of the origin with the coordinates here. And finally, I might not have a position, right? I could be at the origin, so the zero vector. So zero could be a choice. So what we get is every possible direction in the direction key could be the direction of position because the choice of coordinates was left up to us. Now let's look at the velocity of an object at point A. Now to do that, let's first look at displacement. Let's use this notation that r minus is the position vector just before reaching point A and r plus just after leaving point A. The final position was r plus minus the initial position r minus, and that, that would be the displacement. Notice that as the coordinates are moved around, while the position vectors change greatly, the displacement hasn't changed. It's still a little arrow pointed straight up. And the reason that's useful is that the velocity is like a displacement over a time, but instead of a finite displacement, it's like a very small path element, an arbitrarily small displacement, as if minus and plus were actually at almost at the same location, one just before, one just after. And so if an object is going up and I kept a snapshot of the object at point A, we had the object going up, so possible direction of the velocity is up, one. We could have also had the velocity come down at point A, so five. And we could have also just stayed at rest, right? So we didn't do anything, right? And so uh, we're at rest at point A, option zero. So zero, one, five are possible choices for the velocity at point A. Now, how about acceleration? Well, on a straight path, there is acceleration in the same direction as velocity if we're speeding up and the acceleration would be in the opposite direction if we were slowing down. So there are several cases. We could have been on the way up, but our speed decreasing, so our acceleration down, number five. We could have been on the way down and increasing our speed, so still acceleration down, five. 
we could be on the way down, but slowing down, so acceleration up, number one. And there's also an option to have no acceleration, either if we're completely at rest at point A, or at least we're moving up or down at a constant speed. And so that gives us choice zero. And so our choices were zero, one, or five. Now, quiz T2 is to look at position, velocity, and acceleration at point C. And again, you got the idea with the position that you could move the coordinates anywhere you like and therefore make the position, the arrow that goes from the origin to the point of interest, be any of these results. Now, velocity. At point C, where our only choice is to go up the incline, option two, or down the incline, option six, or to be at rest, which would be option zero. And acceleration at point C. Same cases as before, right? We could have been on the way up the incline, speeding up, so acceleration in the same direction as velocity, that's option two. We're on the way up the incline, but we're slowing down. Acceleration opposite direction to velocity, option six. Or we could be coming down the incline and speeding up, so acceleration in the same direction, that's six. Or we're headed down the incline, but we're slowing down. Acceleration opposite our velocity, option two. Or a constant speed, right? We could either be at rest or moving at a constant speed, either up or down the incline, that would be no acceleration. So we get options 0 to 6. On to quiz T3. When an object moves on the curve, there's a little more to look at here. So there an object traveled around the curve, and we kept a snapshot at point B, and just to be a little more precise about the velocity being along your path, it's specifically along a tangent line to the path. We can think of a point on a curve as having a tangential direction. The velocity is tangent to your path. That's what it means to say the velocity is along your path. So we could have been coming around clockwise, and at point B, that would be straight down. Our velocity, we could have been on the way up counterclockwise. At point B, that would be straight up. Of course, we could just be at rest, right? We could just be sitting there at point B doing nothing, right? So we could have a zero, zero vector for velocity. So zero, one, five. Now, acceleration is a little more tricky. And I'll start with an object moving at constant speed. And before, in case A and C, constant speed meant no acceleration. But what we're going to see is if we're moving on a curve, we actually not only have the tangential direction to consider, but the direction perpendicular to that and in particular, when there's a curve perpendicular to the path, in particular, pointing in toward the center of the curvature, that's referred to as the centripetal direction. And if we have a constant non-zero speed, where earlier we would have said we had no acceleration, now it's only the tangential acceleration that we do not have, none or zero. But we do have a centripetal acceleration which has a direction pointing in towards the center of curvature. So that would be option seven. And let's look at that more carefully, right? Let's look at the straight line case where we're referring to that as tangential, and we'll look at the centripetal case, right? In the tangential case, the only way to have an acceleration is if your speed changes. And I'm showing here an object heading down t equals zero is the point in question. We can think of just before as 
t equals 0 minus. That would be just before reaching our point, and 0 plus just after. So let's say we're heading down and we're increasing our speed. I'm showing the after velocity, v0 plus, with a longer length than the before velocity, v0 minus. Now if I line those up here, you could see that initial plus a change equals final. So our small change in velocity, dv, has the direction down. After all, the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. So the direction of acceleration is the direction of the change in velocity, this little differential dv. Right? So if we're speeding up, that little change in velocity, which therefore is the direction of acceleration, has the same direction as velocity. Now, the centripetal case, we're looking at a curved path, constant speed. Right? So uh, earlier we would have said, well, hey, well, we don't have acceleration, right? There's no changing speed. But just the mere fact that we're moving around a curve, it's the direction of velocity that changes. Just before we're tangent to our path, we'll have an initial velocity v0 minus like this. And just after our tangent line has rotated a little bit, our final velocity is v0 plus both arrows with the same length because of the constant speed. So you can see if we line up the velocity arrows to start from a common point, then we can see the change in velocity from initial to final is to the left. And so we get this centripetal acceleration whenever we're moving on a curve. Now to get back to the problem at hand, right? if we're moving at a constant speed, and we're at point B, we had our acceleration left, centripetal, and therefore 7. And if we were heading up, same thing, right? As long as the speed, we have a speed, we have a centripetal acceleration pointing into the center of the circle, or into the center of curvature. Now we can actually have centripetal and tangential acceleration components. Here, our velocity, we could have been coming around this curve. So here at point B, our velocity could be down, and we could be decreasing our speed. Right? We have a non-zero speed, but it's decreasing. Having a speed gives us a centripetal acceleration toward the center of curvature. The fact that we're slowing down gives us a tangential acceleration component which is like a side of a right triangle, right? The acceleration is the hypotenuse of a triangle that has two sides, a centripetal piece and a tangential piece. And the tangential piece is in the opposite direction to velocity, instead of down, up, right? So when we combine to the left, centripetal, and up, opposite or down, our net effect is option eight. We might have been on the way up at a non-zero speed that's increasing. Right? So having a speed gives us centripetal acceleration toward the center of curvature. Having the speed be increasing gives us a component in the same direction as velocity. So still option eight. And then we could have been down and Increasing speed would be this case, option six. Uh, moving up and decreasing speed would also have acceleration number six. And there's another case that we have to look at. And let's look at an object that came over to point B and suddenly reversed direction and went back along its path. What would happen is at point B, it's like a turnaround point in the path, right? You did a reversal. So you had zero speed at point B, but you are in the process of reversing direction. You were slowing down, then speed zero, then speeding up. And it turns out that there we have no centripetal acceleration because the speed is zero, but we were in the process of changing speed. So we would actually have an acceleration up. And it's a little tricky. The, the tangential acceleration 
was opposite the direction while slowing down. So that was when we were on the way down, slowing down, that's up. But it's in the same direction when speeding up. So while we're back on the way up, that's also up, right? In both cases, up. So we get number one could be an option for acceleration. And we could also have down as an option for tangential acceleration. If we came up here to B and slowed, stopped, and fell back down, right? We would have acceleration down. A nice one-dimensional example to better explain what I'm saying is uh, consider throwing a ball straight up in the air. It would slow down on the way up, stop for an instant, reverse direction, and fall back down. So here's the baseball coming up, slowing down, stopped, and then it starts to increase its speed on the way down. Right, so that's a good example of free fall, right, where the acceleration is down, regardless of whether a ball is thrown up, down, or sideways. And last but not least, if the object was just completely at rest at point B, we could have the zero vector as the acceleration. And so we would get every option except two, three, and four. The options that can never happen are options that have components of acceleration that point away from the center of curvature. And there you have it. So the, the takeaway is that the position vector is represented as an arrow from the origin of coordinates pointed toward the object of interest. The velocity arrow has a length proportional to speed, and its direction is always along the tangent line of the path. Acceleration, though, is more complex. It, there are two kinds of acceleration. There's the tangential acceleration related to the object changing speed, and there's the centripetal acceleration related to the object changing direction.